Hello everyone, welcome to part one of the How I Made My In Real Life PvP Inscription card game. Uh, so we're starting things out in this Discord. I created a Discord for my YouTube channel, which I'll put a link in the description on how to join it. And everybody who wants to make the game, I really recommend that you join this because I'm going to be in this folder here, or folder text channel, uh, having all the documents and uh, the pictures for, for making it, for printing it and such. But to get started, I just want to say thank you all for watching, and we'll get right into it. Uh, I shared in this text file or this text channel uh, all the images for most of the game. Although in this first video, I'm just going to be explaining the cards, which includes the small cards, so the collection cards, the extra deck, your side decks, the rare cards, and the main deck, which includes uncommon and common cards, uh, which I will explain when I get to them. But to start things out, I just want to explain that I uh, I'm not a super technically smart person, so the way I did this is I just shared straight up the images, and you can, I don't think you can, actually you can just save image here, and it, but that, but doing it like that saves it as a text file or something weird like that, so what I recommend doing is pressing open in browser, and then it'll open it in browser, and then when you've opened it in the browser, you can press save image as, and it'll save it regularly. Okay, so hopefully that isn't too difficult to do. If anybody has a better option or like a, a way I could share this more effectively, uh, I'm up. I'm open for suggestions. Just you can you can uh, send texts anytime in the general uh, text channel, and I will probably try to keep up with that. So, but I'm gonna move on from there. Uh, we're gonna start with the collections tab, which I'm going to explain how to, how I print them personally. I'm not saying you have to print them the exact same way I print them, but this video is basically just going to be how to print them. I'm not going to explain how to actually laminate the cards or anything along those lines. It's just going to be explaining basically how I did everything online before I started like printing and actually creating the game itself. But we're going to start with the collections, which Sigil Collections is the first card, and this is the back uh, open for me. This is the back that I use for all these collections, and as such, you can see basically the idea of these collection cards is it's a sigil in the middle, and you can buy them for teeth costs, which is up here, the map notes. And uh, when you buy, obviously, a sigil like Bifurcated Strike is going to be really expensive, whereas a sigil like Klinger is really cheap because Klinger is not a very good sigil. <laughs> but the point of this shop is is that you can buy uh, sigils, and this will be the back on them, and then keep them in your storage area, basically, along with things like your pelts or your bone collection, and it'll j and you can put them on your cards at a later date. But these cards are going to be smaller than the regular sized cards that you actually play with. So what I did for my game personally is I printed one of each one of these that I made, and it's not every sigil; it's just some of them. Uh, I don't think there's any rare sigils on here either, or rare sigils being the sigils that are only ever found on rare cards. I don't think there's any of those on here. There is the, uh, what is this, open trap or something like that, which is a very strong sigil being only ever found on one card. In my game especially, it's only found on the, uh, the, the frog, which is the flip side of the frog, but you can't actually get it normally. So this is the only way you'd actually get this sigil on your card. Uh, is from this. Moving on to the bone collection, this is the back that I used for the bone collection. And there's three different types. There's the single bone. Uh, this one will give you one bone. This one would give you four bones. And this is when you sacrifice a rare card to the bone to the bone lord. And obviously, the one that we all know is when you get eight bones at the start of your at the start of a, at the start of a game is when you sacrifice. And I this is custom to my game, but you can either sacrifice the black goat, which is the real real card from the game, or the uh, the Rat King. Either one of those sacrifices will give you this 8-bone uh, boost. So that's for the bone collections, and uh, for this I did five, 5 cards that are the single bone, 4 cards that are the double bone, and 3 that are the 4 bone, or the 8 bones. So you don't have to print the same amount that I printed, but I'm just going to give all the details of exactly what I did for my game. 
Next up, we've got the pelts, which, which we've got the rabbit pelt, wolf pelt, golden pelt, and then the uh, mixed together versions of those, which is if you have two of the same pelt and you go into a mycologist, you can combine the pelts instead of combining the regular uh, cards from your deck. But I'll quickly list off. I've got 10 rabbit pelts because each player starts with five at the beginning of the game. 10 of those as well. And for golden pelts, six golden pelts. And then as far as the mycologist version, there's just two of each one. Two rabbits, two wolf, and two golden. Because just like in the regular game, you only really need to make one because once you have one, the entire pelt shop will turn into that um, that uh, mycologized cards. Even if you only have one rabbit pelt that's mycologized and the other two are like regular, you'd still get the whole shop to pick from, just like in the regular game. And finally, the other collections we got is the ringworm card, which this is the back for it. And here's the front. This is basically just the... You get this card in your collection to show that whenever you get to a campfire, you will you'll be able to use both burns without without killing the card. So free burns. And the last card in here is this, which is just the card that you put your money on your teeth collection pile. Uh, that's where you would store your teeth during the game. And this this back, I also just print a double side of this back with itself as the front to show where you put your bones during the game. And uh, those are optional. You could just keep piles of them. But I like to keep uh, keep that. Oh, and uh, by the way, for this card, there's only two of them. Because you only ever need one. And if both players get it, then there's only ever two used. All right, then. I'm going to quickly describe how I print these cards. Like I said earlier, you can print them however you want. If you have a better method for printing uh, that you prefer to use, you can slap those, those documents in however you want. But this is how I've done it, and this is how I've always printed cards, so I'm just kind of used to it. What basically I have is a Word document here where I've just laid out shapes and then had those shapes uh, outline, no outline, and then shape fill picture. And then from a file you can pick the, the picture you want. So I printed all these out, and then I went ahead and turned all of these into the back uh, what's it called, the, the picture that I use for the back of the cards, and then I just flip the paper over, put it back in the printer, and print it again with the backs on the opposite side. And it usually lines up pretty much good enough for me. But if, of course, like I said, if you want to print it out a different way, you can, but if you want to use the same method, I'm going to quickly tell you that the size that I used for these cards was a 2.52 for height and a 1.78 for width. Width, width however you want to say that word. Yeah, so that's what I used for these cards, height and width, yeah, because this is the smaller card, so they're going to be smaller than the base cards from the game. Getting into the next section, I'm going to go over sigils, or to be more specific, add-ons, which is another type of what I'm calling a card, even though technically they're not really cards, they're more just like small things that you slot into the cards. But... Uh, right here we have all of the sigils, and I'm going to go over uh, the first part of the video is basically, I'm just going to explain how to make it yourself, if that's all you care about, but then the second half I'm going to explain a few little tidbits like some of the custom sigils I added from my, myself or mods, and uh, some other information about how I made this game. But to start things out, we're just going to go over how to make this. So, same process here, you've got all the sigils here. And I will go over how many of each one to print uh, when I go over the cards more. Basically, the idea is that you want to print enough of each one that you won't really run out in a regular game. So basically, if you count how many of each sigil exists in the game based off how many cards you print, because obviously not everybody is going to print the same amount of cards that I print, but you can get a base number. But also, I will note that these sigils, cutting out these sigils sucks. It's really annoying, and it takes forever to do. So I wouldn't just, don't overdo it, because you'll get 
you'll get you'll tire yourself out faster than you think you will. Uh, this special set of add-ons here is specifically for the Ourob Ouroboros, Ouroboros, however you want to pronounce that. It uh, it's the sigils uh, that will be added underneath in a special slot for it, which basically shows how many times it's died. And in my game, it only you can only buff the or Ouroboros up to plus nine, so having a 10-10. Uh, this just makes it so that it's not, I mean, it's still way overpowered, but it's a rare card, so it, it can, it's allowed to be overpowered. Moving on to the campfire add-ons, I simply just took screenshots from the game. If you do like a plus two and then a plus two for damage as well, uh, I've made cards like this one for that, so that you can have both of them added. But... Not, those aren't always used either. And like I said, you can print as many of these as you feel like you'll be using for your game. I've just printed a, a base number of each one to kind of give you a decent number. Uh, like the plus ones, I printed like five of them. Uh, same for like the plus twos for health. But then the plus three, I've only printed like two of those because it's unlikely that both players will be getting more, like a ton of plus threes to their, to their creatures. Uh, finally, the last few add-ons, we've got the Mycologist one, which is, I literally just took a screenshot of one, a card that had the Mycologist edition. Uh, if you wanted to use a different picture or you have a better idea for, uh, for the Mycologist add-on picture, tell me. Uh, here are the power changes, which this is a special shop that I added into my game where you can change the power type of your card. So instead of having like a, a card that does one that has one power, it can have ant power, or it can have bone power, which is one power for every two bones you have. It could have hand power, which is one power for every card you have in your hand, or it could have near power, which just has the opposite power of the card opposing it, which is notable because there are no tentacle cards in this game. My game doesn't have any tentacle cards, which means you'll never see these except for on rare cards, which I will go over later. And now, for these sigils, or actually all the add-ons, I basically just printed them like this without any back. So on the back side of all of my add-ons, it's just white. It's not going to matter too much. And I printed them in the same manner that I printed everything else, which is just putting them on a Word document and printing it. The size is 0 0.83, which I'll show a screenshot of that as well. The next type of card I'm going to be talking about is the cards from your side deck, which are your squirrels and your rabbits, which is very simple for both players, and there's not really much difference between the two. I printed 12 rabbits and 12 squirrels for each side deck. You could do more or less depending on how you want your game to run, but I felt that 12 was a pretty good number and uh, went not too badly. And I'll explain how I printed these cards along with the extra deck cards and the main deck and rare deck cards uh, right after I go over the extra deck, main deck, and rare cards. So next is the extra deck. This is the back that I used for the extra deck which it does kind of look very similar to the to the regular back but it is it's a it's much paler it's noticeably paler especially if you put them right next to each other uh, but there's obviously the extra deck rabbits this will come from the warren the extra deck squirrels which can come from the squirrel ball the starvation card which this is if either player runs out of out of out of cards like they can't draw, they're unable to draw because they're out of cards, the opposing player will gain a starvation card in their hand that they can play wherever they want. Next we got the bee, this comes from the beehive, and after that we have the wriggling tail which comes off the skink, and the skink, which you might be wondering why the skink is an extra deck card. The skink is an extra deck card for my game because I have a special rule which is that if the fledgling symbol is placed onto a wriggling tail, uh, the wriggling tail will transform into a skink. And that skink won't have the wriggling tail ability. Or like the drop tail, I don't remember what the sigil's called. But if you have a wriggling tail with the, uh, what's it called, the fledgling symbol because you put it on the, on your skink, uh, the wriggling tail will turn back into a skink without the tail sigil. Next we have the worker ant from the ant queen, obviously. We've got the Omega, which an Alpha will upgrade itself into an Omega if it has the uh, fledgling symbol added to it. The Omega being the a rare card that I made, but the artwork is not mine. The artwork is from the... I don't remember what the mod is called. It is the Diseased Cards, I believe. 
moose buck, which is if you put the fledgling symbol on the elk, it'll turn into a moose buck. So I have that here. And if you put the fledgling symbol on the mole, it'll turn into the mole man, which I also put here. Same for the mantis turning into the mantis king. And last but not least for the extra deck, we have the smokes, which are obviously just given to the player that is that has lost the last battle. Uh, when you get to a rare battle, or right, not a rare battle, <laughs> a boss battle. So that's all for the extra deck. Obviously, if you wanted to add extra cards that you think would be cool in it, you can do that. If you just want to go with this, you can, or you can not do any of them if you don't want to. I will be describing how I do certain aspects of the game in my next video, which is going to explain the lamination process and some other things about the actual in real life cards themselves. But for now, I'm just going to describe everything like I've been doing so far. And like I said, I'll explain how to print these uh, when I finish explaining all the other cards. As far as amounts of each of these go, two starvations is, is good. Uh, I there's, there's technically a need for six rabbits max because you can play... Because there's three, there's three Warrens in the game, and then there's three Red Foxes, which also have the Gives You a Rabbit sigil. As far as Squirrels go, I just did arbitrarily six as well, because I did six Rabbits, so I did six Squirrels as well. I did like five Bees, I did like three Wriggling Tails, two Skinks, five Worker Ants, two uh, Omegas, two of each of these, two of those, and then one of each of these. Now we're going to move into the rare cards, which I have split up the rare cards from custom ones that I got from mods or I made myself, and the real ones. So we'll start with the real ones, since the ones I made and the custom ones are... Some people might not want to actually do them in the real game. There are a few cards in here that had to be changed slightly, so I'm going to quickly go over each one of them. There's the Amalgam, that's the same. Now the Amalgam in my game is uh, the special the special rare type ability that it has is that right here there's an extra slot to put an extra add-on so the amalgam is the one card in the game that can have three add-ons instead of just two child 13 just like in the regular game whenever you make a sacrifice it'll change sides turning it into this this form the amoeba which has a special rule in my game where it's stinky or not sticky, made of stone sigil, instead of just, I can just read the instructions here quick, but the, the card amoeba has a made of stone sigil, although when in a, on the amoeba, this sigil will grant the card extra effects. All attack based sigils aimed at the amoeba will be ineffective, and all defensive slash on death sigils will not activate when attacked by the amoeba. So basically it's just a stronger version of the made of stone sigil. Uh, the deuce, I had to make a custom sigil for it, because, well, I didn't have to, but I did. Because uh, I didn't want to have him summon bells like he does in the normal game. So basically what this just does is that if the cards adjacent to him are struck, he'll strike. Uh, it, it makes the, de the deuce just slightly better, because in the current game he wasn't very good. Gek is the same as he is in the real game. It's a free card, that's why he's strong. The long elk, uh, I added the fledgling symbol to. And for four bones, you'll get this set, and then once he transforms, he turns into the Long Elk. He is the one card in the game that will gain health upon transforming. So it resets his health, which makes it, uh, which makes him slightly strong. Mantis King, we all know, it's the same as normal. Strange Pupa, I, I, wa I really wanted to do a flip mechanic for these fledgling cards, so that's why Strange Pupa just has a two here instead of a, instead of a one because it flips on a 2 instead of a 1, <laughs> basically. And that's the difference between Mothman and the normal one. Ouroboros, I kind of already explained this. In, uh, the Pack Rat I changed because his regular sigil gives you an item, but there are no items in my game. So I gave him the draw 2 cards sigil, which allows you to just draw 2 cards from your deck. Which, I, I believe it's draw 2, it might be draw 1, but I'm pretty sure it's draw 2. It's a very strong sigil. Uh, all said and done. Yeah, it's draw two cards. Ura Yuli, same as normal game, and that's all for the base game uh, rare cards, but let's move on to the cards that I added or I got from mods. Uh, starting up here, we've got the Ambirazil, M. Ambirazil, I can't pronounce that, 
Uh, this is a bear stat that costs bones instead of blood. It does also cost one blood, though. Uh, it's basically just a really tough card that has the that has the sigil. Uh, the Bell Buzzard, which has the Frozen Within sigil and the uh, Alpha sigil. I don't remember what that sigil is called. But this card, upon being broken open, turns into this, which is just... I, I, the card is called the Entity, I think. I, I don't remember what this says. I'm pretty sure it's in a different language, but I don't remember what it says. It's got 5 attack, 3 uh, health, but it's it's got Brimstone, which means that it'll do... It, it, after it damages the card, the excess damage will be dealt to the scale. Deathworm. Uh, this is... Uh, reference to the Mongolian Deathworm. I think this is from a mod as well. I will note that this text, this this uh, drawing is from a mod, but I made the Bell Buzzard drawing, and I also made the I made this card, but I didn't do this art. This art is from a if from a mod. I don't remember what mod it's from, but it basically just has the Poison the Spikes ability. Uh, the Hugag. I drew this. Uh, it it's basically just a really strong elk. With for the same price, and it moves twice instead of once. Jersey Devil, it has the Bifurcated Strike and the Cornered. So it's basically just going to be doing a lot of attacking. Even the card in front of it will get attacked occasionally, even though it's got Bifurcated Strike. Uh, next we have the Kitsune, which this was in my explaining, uh, or not explaining, but my example game. The Rabbits had this card, which I made this card. It is... It has the alternating sigil, and it changes between these two forms. So uh, a two six and a six six for three cost. It's just a strong. It's it's basically just a tank card. Uh, we got Nessie, which is the other four cost card in in the game that I added. It's basically instead of having seven seven stats like the Ura Yuri, it has an eight damage stat and a three, but it goes underwater and it attacks cards underwater because it has the Lure sigil. Uh, and then lastly we have the Nixie, which this is a way of getting the card of the hand attack without adding an add-on onto it. So it frees up one of your add-on slots if you wanted a card that would do that. The Omega I already kind of talked about, but it is basically just a stronger alpha, which this sigil will hit all lanes, not just the ones that are adjacent to it, to give them the plus one buff. The Pharaoh's Pets is in the base game, but it's not in Leshy's section, so I added it. It's got the exact same uh, artwork, which is kind of annoying because it's pixelated, but I, it's not, it doesn't bother me, at least. The Squirrel Ball, which I added, and by I added, I mean I did this artwork, but it's technically in the game. It basically just drops a squirrel whenever it moves, and so it has this, uh, it has Sprinter by default, but you can add extra movement, like Clinger is a good one actually to add to this, because when you add Clinger, it'll move on your turn, summoning a squirrel. Which means that you could technically, like, constantly get extra squirrels if you can keep playing them, and uh, get high sacrifices out there. So it's a sacrifice maker. We've got the Hodag, which is in the base game, uh, but it's it works slightly differently in the base game. I don't actually use this card in my game, but I made it and then I kind of abandoned it. So if somebody wants to use it, they can. But this is just, uh, is a, its attack is equal to how many cards you have in your death pile. And then I have the man question mark, which I also don't have in my game, but I, I made it and then I abandoned it, so I thought I'd put it out here anyway. It's got mirror power. And that's all the rare cards. We'll move on to uncommon and common cards, but first I want to just explain the difference between uncommon and common cards are. So, this is main deck cards, and main deck card I have the ringworm in here, he's supposed to be considered uncommon, but I put him in here on accident. I hope you can forgive me for that. The way my game works is that the cards that are kind of stronger, like the Stoat, which has a baseline stat that are just, they're stronger than a regular card. But they're not strong enough to be considered a rare card. These I labeled as uncommon cards. So basically in my game, the main deck, uh, regular cards, you there's three copies of each one. So there's three copies of the Wolf Cub, there's three copies of the Wolf, Three copies of the elk fawn, three copies of the cat, three copies of the turkey vulture, etc. But these uncommon cards, there's only two copies of. So, starting things off, we have the frog, which 
Leshy is only is the one that is able to play the frog in the in the base game. I added it. It's uh, it's got the frozen within sigil or frozen soul sigil, which turns it into a burning trap. Field mice. I changed their sigil to be a card search, and the reason that this card is is an uncommon card is because this sigil is really good. The reason it's not as good in the base game is because it's on the uh, magpie, and the magpie is a flying card, so flying is uh, kind of a negative a negative sigil to be added to a card, so it kind of balances out, which is why the field mice is a stronger card, because it is uh, it gives you that without the flying. Pack Mule has Death Draw. I explained that in my example game as well, but this allows you to draw a card that's died on your side of the board uh, after you play it. Everybody knows the Stink Bug, that's not changed. Everybody knows the Stoat and the Stunted Wolf as well. The Lammergeier, I actually buffed because I thought the Lammergeier was a little bit weak with its current bone sauce, especially with the ability to throw uh, the bone ability or the bone power onto any card with that one shot. So what it has is double bone power, meaning that every one bone you have is equal to one power, which means it can be a very strong card if it hits the board. And since it has flying, it'll fly over. So you probably want to get rid of that quickly if you're fighting a Lemmergeier. But it is a it is an uncommon card, so you won't see it very often. Oh, and finally we've got the glitch card, which I don't know why it's a it's a gif or a gif or however you want to pronounce it, good gif. Uh, but it worked fine when I printed it, so I wasn't concerned with it. Basically, the way that the glitch card works in my game is it's got four slots to put add-ons on, so you can put up to four add-ons onto it, and then whenever you draw it, you draw a random card from your from the main main deck, not your deck, but the main deck, and uh, you have to use that card with the add-ons on it uh, for that game or whatever. So it has this, basically the same effect. It gives you a random card every time you draw it, but you can use, but it but it has that special ability to give you up to four add-ons. So it isn't a bad card. It can just screw you over sometimes. And then we'll move into the ones that are from mods or that I made, which, starting off with Swordfish, this is a card I made. Now there are a few sigils that I added into the game that weren't, aren't in the base game. It's things like Brimstone, which the reason some of these extra cards are added is because I wanted to use those sigils. So Swordfish is an example of that. The Hawk is from the Airy mod, I believe, and uh, it transforms between Hawk and and Diving Hawk form, basically, where it has Sniper and two attack versus no attack. Uh, the Hawk is actually one of the weaker uncommon cards, but having Alternator is a really good sigil that you can pass onto a different card. Next, we got the Pard, which just has the Alpha sigil uh, for one blood instead of bones. We've got the Fungi, which has the Sacrifice Eater, which is like Corpse Eater, except it comes in whenever you sacrifice a card. The Bullet Ant, which basically I just did the same thing I did with the Lammergeier, where it has double ant power, so every one ant gives it two power instead of one. Uh, the Bighorn is just a nice base stat. A two attack for one cost is always a strong card. We've got the Alligator Snapper, which has the uh, Steel Armor, I believe the sigil is called, which makes every time it's get attacked, it takes one less damage. And the Hamadrid, which has Poison and Sniper. Uh, it's decently expensive, but it has some really strong sigils, so that's why it's uh, so expensive. And finally, we got the Thrush, which is from a mod. I believe this is also from the Airy mod. I haven't been saying which ones are from mods. Most of them are from mods. Uh, if I don't say anything, I assume it's from a mod. Uh, except for the Badger. I did make the Badger. The Badger has Digger, and yeah. Moving on to the main deck cards. And again, the only reason I'm going over all these cards is to show if I've done anything different with them. Because some of them I had to, to alternate, not alternate, but uh, either buff or nerf depending on how I feel like they would work in the real game. I'm not claiming to be perfect at this, but I feel like I did a decent job in making sure everything was uh, more balanced. Uh, the cat does have the special ability to be sacrificed nine times and turned into the undead cat. That's just like in the base game. I, have to, I added extra st a double stink, skink, double stink to the skunk because in the base game the skunk was just really weak so I thought I'd give it a little boost. Uh, another thing I need to note is that 
in this game, ants, ant decks actually ended up being really strong. So even though the Ant Queen looks like a regular card, she's considered uncommon and only has two copies. And the Lammergeier and the Bullet Ant only have one copy in the game, because they're actually really strong too. But other than that, everything is pretty much normal. Here's the other backs of the cards. Let's quick go over the main deck custom mod or custom cards. So this is the Weasel, which is a texture from the base game, uh, used for the Stoat when it's not the special Stoat when it's not uh, PO3. And it has the Lure Sigil, which I added. It's I believe the Lure Sigil from mod actually, but it it causes you to pull cards that are underwater out of the water and attack them. So it's a counter to waterborne cards. Uh, the Tuatara, which has the Made of Stone sigil. Snake Necked, which has the Lure sigil. It's basically just a slightly different version of a turtle. The Salmon, which is uh, from the second half, like part two of Inscription, and it's the same as it is in there. The Lynx, which has the Cornered sigil. Got the Archer Ant, which has the Archer sigil. Red Fox, which has the Rabbit Sigil. It's a two cost, two two, through with the Rabbit. Raccoon, which has the Clinger. Again, a lot of these I just added because I wanted to give uh, sigils like this a, a place to actually be on. Hyena, just has the Digger Sigil. It's basically a coyote with one extra bone cost for a Digger. Cost two are the Capybara, which is the Nano Armor Sigil, and the Bear Cub, which turns into a Grizzly upon transforming. But it's also really kind of expensive. So, we finally moved into the actual printing of cards. And I have a document here that I will be printing and explaining how to, how to laminate the cards at a later time. So part two will come out and it'll be explaining this print. But basically, I'll show a picture come up on the screen right now of the size that you want for these cards. If you're going to use Word, and it just uses the same system of putting them like this and then printing them on the back side. Uh, but yeah. Finally, one more thing I want to go over before I finish this video is my custom uh, my custom tribes uh, images that are on the back of cards. If you've ever looked at a card on the back of it, I'll probably pull up an image to show that. But the cards themselves have in, like in the top left corner, they have a, a tribe, which is used in the tribe pick pick by tribe map node to pick a, pick a pick a card based off their tribe. And not all cards actually have tribes, so I've gone ahead and put made made some tribes for cards that don't have them. So this is the rodents tribe, which is on things like the rat king and field mice. Uh, we've got the reptile tribe, which that's in the base game, so we should know which ones that's for. This is the Beast Tribe, or actually, it's called the Beast Tribe, but for some reason I labeled it Musk. Uh, this is, goes on things like bears and uh, porcupines, which are kind of don't fit into any other category. Uh, we've got the Insect Tribe, which is for insects, obviously. Hooved Tribe, this is, goes on things like the pack mule and elks and such like that. This is the fish tribe, which is basically anything that goes underwater except for the, what's it called? Kingfisher. We've got the feline tribe. This goes on things like the cat and the pard, which are felines. Uh, we got the canine, which goes on all canines. And finally, the aviary, or I think it's called aviary, right? bird, whatever it is. That's for the birds. Uh, so this kind of ends the how, I, how, how to print and how to make these cards section. Like I said, I'm going to be making a video, part two will be on how to laminate them, but if all you care about is how, how to make the game yourself, you can stop watching now. But the next section I'm going to go into is kind of my creative process for how I made all of this, and some more sneak peeks, and, or not sneak peeks, but behind the scenes on things that were going to be in the game that never ended up in. So moving on, uh, we're going to go into here, which is some things that never get into the game, such as the campfire. Uh, this is kind of a, a dumb one to start with, but the campfire, 
I obviously made a campfire that's for attack and a campfire for defense. Uh, or for power and health, or whatever you want to call them. Uh, in the base game, for map nodes. But originally I was going to have you flip a coin or something to determine whether you got health or damage campfire. Which, if you wanted to put that in your base game, I can, uh, I can, I can share the base files for, for this thing, or you can just get them out of the inscription itself, because all the files in the inscription you can just pull. But uh, that's how the campfire was going to work. But it, it ended up, I ended up changing it. Next, we've got the squirrel orbit sigil, or what, what's it's called? Like, I don't remember what it's called in the real game. But I was going to to use this sigil. Uh, to, it was called Tidal Lock, that's what it's called. I was going to use the sigil to, to make cards that wouldn't be able to be changed. Like, you wouldn't be able to add things to them. And uh, that's why the Easy Rock has it, because the Easy Rock, you can't put sigils, you can't put add-ons onto the Easy Rock. It has to, it can only ever get uh, the sigils off the card that it's copying. But I ended up kind of scrapping the idea, because the Easy Rock would be the only one that actually uses this. It might actually be in the instructions explained, if I look quick, but, yep, no, it doesn't explain it at all. Point is, the Easy Rock is the only one that gets Tidal Lock, and the Tidal Lock sigil itself doesn't do anything in my game. Uh, amorphous, or random ability sigil, I was going to try to put this in the game for the, for the uh, amoeba, where you like I had a special dice or something that you would roll and you'd get a random sigil, but I decided against it because it was, I don't know. It felt like a lot of work for one sigil that isn't even that good in the real game, so I just changed the amoeba to be slightly better, actually, and got rid of this, scrapped that idea. Uh, this is a sigil that would allow you to plant a tree. <laughs> that was my plan. I... I never use it, it, it. I got rid of the idea kind of fast, but if I go over here quick, you can see I had plans of having like a stump and a grand fur in the game. I even had a special sigil for this one, which I don't even remember what it was going to do. I think it was supposed to start as a grand fur and then because of this sigil turn into a stump once you killed it, but it never got put in the game. It even has a, a, a custom like color to the back of the cards. They were going to have special backs even, but I never ended up doing that. So. This plant boost sigil was abandoned. We've got blood fledgling. I okay. I'm gonna be completely honest. I made this game like a year and a half, maybe even two years ago, when the game originally came out. I kind of was working on this right away, and then I finished it, and I played it a few times with myself because I don't have too many people that wanted to play with me. And then more recently, I played it with a few of my friends that were interested, and that's why that's what gave me like the idea to make this video myself. Or start start like putting it on YouTube that I made this game. Uh, but I found this file. I have no idea what I was <laughs> what I was doing. I don't know what this is supposed to be. But it's in it is something I was thinking about doing at one point. Uh, we've got double corpse. I don't remember what this does either. I think it had something to do with. Uh, I think it had something to do with this actually, because I think originally my plan was that unkillable was only going to activate if the card died from battle and then if the card died from sacrifice it would go back to your hand with this sigil so there would be two different so basically unkillable would be less strong because right now unkillable comes back to your hand if it's sacrificed or killed which is very strong but i was planning on making it so that the uh it would only come back to your hand if it was killed by battle and then this one would be sacrifice to come back. I, I don't think this was the final artwork I was going to use for it. This was just a work in progress one. Uh, but I might be wrong about that because this sigil is called Corpse Stealer. At least that's what I named the file. So maybe I'm remembering that wrong, but I did definitely have a plan to make Unkillable weaker because right now it's really strong. Uh, didn't end up going with that either. We've got the the Parasite or whatever. This is a sigil that was added in Casey's mod, which puts an egg on the other side of the board. And I didn't put this in the game because when you're fighting against Leshy, wrecking his board is fun. But when you're playing against a real person, 
wrecking their board just feels bad. It, like, it doesn't feel fun to have your board destroyed, and it just feels like a really strong card. So I didn't put it in the game. Uh, and finally, Orbital Strike. This was going to be in the game because of this other card that it was going to be in the game also, which is the Moon. It was going to be a 6 cost, 40 health, 1 attack, Orbital Strike with Lure, Tidal Lock, and Shield. So the reason Tidal Lock would be on this is to stop it from getting a whole bunch of other powers. Uh, but I ended up not using it because Tidal Lock was going to be lame. But if I took away all of these sigils and only gave it Orbital Strike... I was concerned it wasn't. I, I was concerned that if you put any amount of health, like any amount of campfire on it, it was going to be too strong. And I didn't know how much health I could possibly, because I had to justify the six cost with some health. But if I only, but if I made it like a three cost with ten health, I don't even know if it'd be worth it at that point. And it doesn't have the same outline as a rare card, so I didn't know how you were going to get the card. So I abandoned the idea completely. Uh, finally. We've got, I'm going to quickly go over all the sigils that I added into the game, which is Sacrifice Eater. That's when, that's when it eats the sacrifice, basically. Lure, I kind of already explained, which is, uh, pulls cards that are waterborne out of the water. Death Draw, you draw a card that's died. Double Draw, you draw two cards when you play the card. Dig, this is actually from the base game, I'm pretty sure, from Casey's mod. Death Spikes, in my game, the Porcupine Sigil, or like Spikes or whatever, does not combine with the poison sigil to cause death spikes nor like normally. So in order to get that effect, you'd have to use death spikes. And you can get the sigil by itself by using crack on the death one. Uh, we got cornered, which basically this is whenever a card is placed in front of a card, or opposing the card that has cornered, it'll strike it. So it's basically the turret uh, from part three of Inscription. But I made it look a little bit more. I made it look more like the uh, Leshy style of add-ons instead of or sigils instead of part threes. Uh, we've got this is just buffed extra, and it gives all cards on your side of the board plus one to attack. Brimstone, which you attack through the card and deal extra damage to the scale. I also already explained basically. This just causes you to, the card that has the sigil on it, to attack whenever the card that uh, gets struck next to it is attacked. So it'll strike that way if the card next to it is struck, or it'll strike this way if the card right here is struck. Uh, but that is the full card, the full breakdown of all the cards that I made, and kind of how my game works. I, I hope everybody that wants to make this will join the Discord. Uh, this Discord is not going to be just for inscription. It's going to be for my entire YouTube channel. And I also want to make note that this, the, my YouTube channel is not going to be just inscription theme stuff. Once I finish making all these videos on how to make the game, I will not probably be making any more inscription-based content because my, my main goal is to use this to explain all the other games that I make because I, I really like making games. That's like my passion, you could say, or my, my favorite hobby. Uh, so I'll be releasing other games that I've made myself with, uh, you know, not copying anybody else's work, just straight up make myself, because most of the games I make, I just make myself. And if anybody's interested in supporting me, you can check out those games that I'll be making, or be making videos for. I already have a lot of games that I've made, but I haven't made any videos for them yet. Uh, I will also note that the video type on this channel is going to be very random. Uh, I've got quite a few different ideas for videos that I'm going to be posting, but basically I'm just going to be posting anything I find interesting and have done research for or anything along those lines. So if you think that sounds interesting, uh, subscribe, and I thank you all for watching. Goodbye.